final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's a five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Okay, thank you, Howie Itzkowitz. You'll be seeing Howie in the Star Trek motion picture in just a few minutes. With us in the studio here, I'm Mick Garris with the Fantasy Film Festival, and Bill Shatner, the star of Star Trek, the TV series, and the motion picture, is with us right now. Bill, thanks for being here. Don't forget, add the raw material for and the, the <laughs> comedy routine. That's right. That's right. It's a wealth. Really, it's eerie to hear yourself imitate him. Although I, I can't imagine it's me. I heard him imitating somebody else. It sounded exactly like that person. I can't imagine he's as, is as exact with me. <laughs> Pretty close. Yeah. It's the phrasing. The first thing I want to ask, um, with the great success you had with the TV series, uh, it probably crossed your mind that it might not be the best idea to reprise the role in, in 1979 or whatever mm -hmm. as Captain Kirk in a major motion picture. You're an actor, you play a lot of different roles, and uh, I imagine you had some hesitation about taking that sure on. Sure did. I, I uh, thought about it all in about five minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, you can rationalize anything, and as I went around whether I should or shouldn't do it ten years after the, the fact, and the um, series had grown and grown from a, a mediocre uh, series that had been received in a middling fashion, to something that is, is a phenomenon, I, I wrestled with the idea of whether I should play the role, and th then I suddenly realized, why am I even thinking about it, uh, agonizing over it? I had to do it. Uh, I just couldn't allow anybody else to play the role of Captain Kirk. And although at that time, the script hadn't been written, uh, the concepts were changing, I, uh, I knew it was, it was going to be good. I knew it was something I had to do, no matter what the results were, both uh, um, in my career or what the results were artistically as, uh, as the movie. Originally it was a $15 million film and it mushroomed into one of the biggest budget films of all time. It must have been kind of a nice feeling sitting in the middle of this massive production. Well, it sounds great. Um, what takes place, though, from $15 million to whatever the final uh, budget was, is a sense of growing hysteria <laughs> <laughs> permeating the entire studio. Responsibility. We, well, uh, you, uh, me too, but uh, on a far lesser degree than to Robert Wise, the director, and, and Gene Roddenberry as uh, producer, and then of course the heads of the studio, um, heads both uh, literally and figuratively were going to roll <laughs> as, the, uh, as the thing got uh, more and more expensive. And there was a feeling of how much, how, 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 how long will this last and how much will it cost, you know. Uh, so it wasn't like being in the eye of a storm, it was being in a gale wind. Uh, now, it seems to me, watching you on television and in films, you really enjoy yourself in front of the cameras. Is that true? Uh, yeah, uh, I really, I'm an actor. I've done uh, nothing else but act all my life. I, I enjoy my work. Um, I am bored uh, at times, as we all are, especially making films, um, and the repetition of the theater uh, can be boring. But on the whole, I love to act. I love to uh, take the challenge of a role and make it mine and uh, def definitively mine. Somebody else can do as well or better, but it'll it'll be different. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, that I enjoy. Captain uh, Kirk, how much do you have in common? What are the things you see in him that... Well, I play Captain Kirk 
because the situations are so uh, fantastic that the only way to deal with any kind of reality for me is to play the situation the way I would I a Shatner would love to react right. if I were in that if I were in that death uh, potential potentially death uh, situation I would like to react in this way and that's the way I play mm -hmm. it do you see uh, your role as Captain Kirk maybe uh, still playing cowboys and Indians a little bit or well, all acting is playing cowboys and Indians a great deal, not a little bit. As you get older and as your craft uh, hopefully um, uh, perfects itself, you do less pretending to be cowboys and Indians and more figuring out how, what the problems are, what the potentials are of a scene, or, and, and attack it and approach it in an artistic fashion so that the it's an amalgamation of cowboys and Indians and technology and experience and, and artistry. Well, you played cowboys and Indians, good guys and bad guys. Uh, what do you enjoy more? I, I, I hope the American movement isn't uh, listening to you. <laughs> you infer the Indians are bad guys. Symbolically uh, speaking, I of course. Yes. I thought I'd make that <laughs> point for both of us. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for looking out for me. Though. Right. Um, what do I prefer, you mm -hmm. say? Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any, any preference. Uh, the cliché is the bad guys are the best parts to play because they're the most interesting, but not necessarily. A good guy, if he's fighting to be a good guy, or a good guy who um, doesn't know he's a good guy. I mean, there are so many variations that it isn't necessarily white bread to play, um, to play a good guy and Jewish rye to play a bad guy. <laughs> Well, there's a lot to say about heroism. It's awfully nice to have be the man who's cheered on screen. True, and if you can infer that the heroism isn't instinctive, but it requires an act of will, if you're really frightened of what's going on, mm -hmm. but it requires the screwing up of your courage um, to the sticking place, I believe is the phrase. Right. Why, that's, that's, uh, that can be interesting. Well, it's encouraging uh, what I have seen in films lately, several films, we're back to cheering heroes. And who is more heroic than Captain Kirk on the Enterprise? It's something that, that I think is, is an encouraging statement about fantasy films and Excalibur being the main one out at this time. Right. And to be a part of that movement, I, you were doing that in 1966. Yes. Um, heroes should have, should be looking as eagles look. They should have a vision of the future, even in their eyes. Even when they look at the horizon, it's beyond the horizon. I think um, a great director once said, what are they doing uh, talking about uh, actor studio people? Um, he said, why, 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 don't they, why don't they think of a great sunset, he was saying, uh -huh. because this was his approach. Right. And uh, I didn't understand that remark for years. But of course, you, anything can work for you. If a sunset moves you, it's just as valid as thinking about some childhood event that may have moved you. Do you have a favorite role that you've done? No, I, I don't do things like that. I, I think of it as moment to moment. Um, I think of a role or anything in life, I guess, but certainly a role is how well you can play each moment. And then you go from that moment to the next moment. And if you're s cooking, all of those moments meld and uh, become a whole, as pointillism, I suppose. Does that mean that uh, there's not a role, an ideal role you'd love to play that you've not done yet? Well, this summer I was, I entertained the thought for quite a time of playing Richard III at a Shakespeare festival. And uh, I had to uh, cancel out at the last moment because of, film commitments uh, this summer, and, and uh, I want to do Richard III before I pack it in. Mm -hmm. So that's... Um, All right, we'll go, we'll go from Shakespeare back to Star Trek for a minute. Uh, Star Trek is an amazing phenomenon. Uh, there are conventions all over the world, thousands of people attending them. Uh, one fan has gone as far as to change his name legally uh, to James T. Kirk. Uh, how can you account for that, and how does that make you feel to be basically the forefront of that well, fandom? 
I can't account for it, uh, but nor could I account for the the yelling and the screaming at the Beatles or uh, Frank Sinatra or wherever, mm -hmm. whenever it started. Uh, there have been uh, things that have caught the imagination of the public and especially the youth uh, all through uh, our entertainment history. So Star Trek is part of that history. And I don't know what accounts for it. Uh, hysteria is one, mm -hmm. love is another, and all the things in between. And how does it make me feel? In a, in a strange way, I'm untouched by it. I, I don't think of it as a reality. I don't mm -hmm. even perceive it uh, or conceive it. Uh, I'm just an actor. Uh, I go from uh, work to work, and um, Star Trek was a job. Uh, it is a job. We're, we're going to make another one, and uh, it's, um, it's, it's fun. Uh, I'm having a great time playing with the story, with uh, everybody who is responsible, uh, a wonderful producer by the name of Harv Bennett, and I, and the writers, and the, the, uh, we're having a great time uh, playing with the story. In other words, you're allowed to put a lot of creative uh, input of your own into the direction of this, isn't it right? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I understand Star Trek, I think. And I should think you would. I think I would, and uh, if, if, even if I were stupid by 79% <laughs> in one long movie, I'd have to, something would have to have rubbed off. So between all the people who were responsible for the creation of Star Trek, I, uh, I'm in there uh, kicking and, and shouting, and, and it's, uh, it's really, it's, it's fun. As you were pointing out, the j enjoyment, one has no... Uh, criteria to measure uh, anything in acting or in in entertainment by except your own enjoyment. If you think it's funny, then it may be funny to the audience the first time that joke is cracked. And and especially in a film where you don't have a tryout audience as you do in a play, everybody's working blindly. Really, I think that's fine. Good. I think that's dramatic. That should hold. That and you go thinking, well, I think we've got a good movie here. And then. It either is or isn't the audience immediately tells you. you know? and the audience, I think, can sense the performer's point of view. I think they can sense, as in the case with you, that you're having a good time. I got, I've got to have a good time, and I have found myself saying of late, let's not do this unless we're going to have a good time. And I really mean it. Um, from every point of view, first of all, uh, time goes by too quickly not to have a good time. And secondly, if you're having a good time, we all know that the audience is going to have a good time, at least we suspect. Uh, that may not be so, but the opposite is certainly so. If you're not having a good time, very definitely the audience is not going to have a good time. Now, uh, you've done a lot of science fiction and fantasy genre work. Uh, does that particularly appeal to you? Two things that immediately come to mind are two of the Twilight Zone episodes, um, Terror at 20,000 Feet and uh, right. the Devil Head one. Certainly uh, time. Uh, interspersed between there. I didn't, never thought of myself as doing anything in the science fiction fantasy world other than Star Trek. But as you add them Several up, years you, of that. Yes. Yeah. Well, a year and five years go by and you do something else. You've forgotten right. if you did the other one. And then people who are keeping track of these things remind you, say, oh, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> but I'm you sorry, did. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> part of my, uh, the meter part of my career. Um, Fantasy and horror are uh, the original storytelling, I, I guess. Uh, certainly the Greeks uh, told their stories of great horror. Uh, Oedipus is one of the original, if not the original, horror story. Uh, so horror is a, and fantasy is a uh, atavistic uh, thing in man. It's what the way the storytellers around the fireplace held everybody's attention. If you want to uh, keep a group of children together and keep their focus of attention, tell them a horror story. Scare them. Which mm -hmm. I used to do in, in camp at night and make <laughs> up these horrible stories. I think I, that's where I first decided I, I, uh, I could become an actor because I was entertaining these kids in bunks by telling them terrible stories that I was making up on the spot or else that I had read and stolen from Edgar Allan Poe or, <laughs> or whatever. We're fast running out of time. Uh, I'd like to talk about any future projects you have coming up for us to watch out for, well, in addition uh, to Star Trek. Yeah, Star Trek, uh, which we'll film in the fall. Uh, I think that uh, a series called The Protectors you'll see sometime next season on ABC. Terrific. I'm very hopeful of that. Uh, 
story about a policeman, a group of policemen. Um, there are a number of things, uh, development things that I have going, a couple of directing things in, in uh, TV that uh, I'll be doing this year. A lot year. of growth for you. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a wonderful year, and it looks the future looks very bright. That's great. And now let's see just how bright the future can look with Star Trek, the motion picture, uh, starring William Shatner. Thanks a lot for being with us, Bill.